Preparation of procedure manual on titling of public utilities land has been done. The draft procedure manual has been prepared and is currently going review by the stakers, by the stakeholders, and I want to confirm that we will be finalizing that exercise soon. A pilot program is scheduled thereafter, uh, was scheduled uh, within the year 2023 and 2024, uh, the financial year, and uh, the counties selected for that pilot program, Honorable Speaker, is Kirinyaga and Busia, a letter requesting for an update status report on all public learning institutions in the two counties has been sent also to the Ministry of Education so that we can put the, the work together or the report together and the status report to assist the public utilities program team plan and execute the titling of all the remaining uh, schools within the two counties as a pilot. Why is it necessary, Honorable Speaker? Because we want to use the process uh, that is uh, uh, proven and uh, also for consistent purposes, Honorable Speaker, it helps the teams on the ground to be able to do that exercise. That's where we are with the titling. I agree, it is slow, Honorable Speaker, and we need to expedite the process. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable CS. Um, Senator Bugwa, I don't know whether you have a supplementary question. With your indulgence, Mr. Them, Speaker, yes. I want to donate my chance to the Honorable uh, Senator of Nyeri to ask the You have no such power to do that. <laughs> it's either you have the supplementary or not. I do leave it at that. So um, I can see the Senator for Nyeri, who have donated, is, has not even uh, requested. Yes, Senator Matinga. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, for giving me this chance. Let me start uh, by thanking the Honorable CS for her punctuality and uh, uh, well explanation of the, 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 the questions that were raised by Senator for uh, Kirinyaga. Nyeri and Kirinyaga being bordering counties, Mr. Speaker, we share uh, equally the same challenges. My question would be to the Honorable CS. Uh, primary schools have been titled, whereas the land was donated by the same community the churches have been left behind. So could be the, the seers uh, maybe tell us why the churches which are adjacent to schools, are sponsors of the schools, have not been issued with the titles while the schools that the sponsor have been issued. The last question, Mr. Speaker, is could the Honorable seers explain to us why the colonial villages, which are lumped, especially in Nyeri County, have not been issued with the titles despite the directive from the previous regime and the current regime? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable CS and Honorable Senators, you are intent on only one supplementary question related to the original question asked by the Senate. Yeah, so kindly respond to that, and, uh, Honorable CS. Honorable Speaker, uh, I want to thank the Honorable Senator for Nyeri for that uh, supplementary question. Uh, although I don't know whether the colonial village is a supplementary question uh, because it goes outside the parameter of the question raised by the senator for, for Kirinyaga on, on churches. Uh, churches are, um, in my view, they are independent institutions. They don't, they are, they don't fall under national government once land is uh, allocated to you as a church then it is the responsibility of the church to take up the processing of the title. And you realize that uh, it is quite a huge uh, uh, a task and therefore a huge budget, and we wouldn't do it for the... We don't have a budget to do titles for churches. It's for the churches to take up, and where we need to facilitate them in our registries, we will facilitate in terms of documentation. And uh, then on the colonial villages, I have already asked for a report on my desk for all the colonial villages, especially in Yandarawa and Nyeri. And um, I will be giving directions in terms of 
how to start the exercise of titering. I think there are more than 300 colonial villages in both counties, and uh, I can assure you I will work on those. I've taken it up already, Honorable Speaker. Senator Manzo Daniel. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, now that uh, we are talking of land which has not been alienated or status is not known, could uh, the minister, who we have a long history with and is a, a stand, uh, an outstanding lawyer, uh, update us as to the status of, of the land uh, against Konza City? There are titles which have been pending for quite a while of uh, Aimi Makilungu Ranji Farm. Honorable Senator, as you know, I give guidance that uh, the questions or supplementary questions should be in line with the original question so that now the CAs, you know, our mind is on the school stately. But if we ask other questions which might not get answers now, then it's a big problem. So let us, as much as possible, stick to the, to the, to, to the original question. Honorable CAs. I would, uh, yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. It is not possible for me to give uh, the Honorable Daniel Manzo, the Senator for Makweni, an answer now on the question he has raised. But I can, uh, we can raise and I can give him an answer maybe in, at another either sitting or preferably directly he can uh, contact me and uh, we'll give him the necessary response as, a, as an office. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that's okay, uh, Senator Manzo. Anytime you can get the CS. Uh, Senator, shoot the moment. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me take this opportunity to thank the, the Cabinet Secretary and her team, both the PS and the Secretary, for the passage of the Affordable Housing Bill, which I earlier said it was a scam, but I withdraw that, that word now and say it was a very good job. Well done, job. We've passed, we've passed 42, we, we amended 42 amendments, and uh, congratulations to this House also. Uh, let, me, let me go straight to page three. I would want the uh, Cabinet Secretary to tell this House Number 25 is Marsabit County. Out of 185 schools, only four schools has a title deed. And two other you've indicated as reservations. Can the uh, cabinet secretary tell us what reservation is and why out of 185 schools, only four has a title deed? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Yes, uh, Honorable yeah, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, to answer the Senator, I want to say that Masabit is one of the counties that adjudication has not been completed. In fact, the titling of schools will be part of the adjudication process, and therefore I, I think that is when we'll be able to respond or to give you a complete uh, uh, answer regarding the schools in Masabit. And of course, this particular time, I think we'll be more careful so that even as we do the adjudication, then we complete the titling for the schools. Thank you. Uh, Senator Dulo Fatuma. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank uh, CS for comprehensive response to the queries raised. Now, I, I want to comment on Isiolo, where we have 146 schools, there is only one with a title. And of course, you have explained what reservation is. So I want to know whether the processing of the titles is done by the schools or it's the government directly that actually uh, initiates uh, the process of uh, uh, issuing uh, titles to those schools. Mr. Speaker, if you can allow me a rider to that, the issues of encroachment 
on most of the government schools by private individuals. What is the government doing about it? I thank you. Yes, yes. Isuro is uh, undergoing uh, community land uh, tightering. Majority of land in the Isuro will be under community land. It's one of the very difficult uh, counties and uh, the Honorable Madam Senator would, uh, is one of the leaders in that county, Honorable Speaker, and would do us very good by bringing communities together we are ready to do tightering. We have funding for tightering, but I can tell you there are many issues arising uh, when we start doing community tightering. Honorable Speaker, including disagreement on names, disagreement on uh, boundaries, but I want to assure her that uh, we are working on community tightering. And as I had responded earlier to Honorable Senator for Masabit, Tightering this time, when we complete the tightering, we'll also do the tight for the rest of the round. We will also complete the tightening for the public schools. In terms of encroachment, may I maybe take the opportunity, standing on this floor of the Senate, Honorable Speaker, with your permission to say that any encroachment is an illegality, must be stopped both by the people occupying the land the public, our enforcement, law enforcement officers, elected leaders have a, a lot to play. And of course, Honorable Speaker, my office will, when issuing titles, which is not just producing the title as per, we will go back, we normally have to go back with a surveyor to establish the beacons once the beacons are established, including elaborate now, uh, elaborate mapping and survey then we are able to do tightering. That's why you can see the process is a bit slow, but also we need more funding for this particular activity. The tightering started in 2019 for all schools. I mean, the direction was given by the head of state then. Thank you. Thank you, CS. Honourable members, uh, yeah, as I said, Honourable Senators, you know our standing orders has allocated 20 minutes per each question. The CS has three questions. We also have another CS uh, for energy who is also appearing this morning. So I want to give maybe two more supplementaries, Senator Boni Karwale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, allow me to uh, congratulate the minister. It's long since we last met uh, Madam CS. Uh, I'm truly impressed with the professional manner in which you go around discharging as a, a cabinet secretary is something the government really needs. Mr. Speaker, having said this, I recall CS when I was member of parliament in Ekolomani, and I believe this applies to other members of parliament in office today. I opened seven new secondary schools and 16 new primary schools for which I bought land and built. And the challenge we have had, Madam Minister, is that some of the plots that we acquired require succession. And because it is public land becoming, private land becoming public land, the people who received the money from us are not willing to come to court so as to assist us in the normal transfer. Is there affirmative action, a directive that the ministry can give to help such a school so that they can be assisted in titling Madam CS? Madam CS. Yeah, thank you. Uh, to the Honorable Senator Harware, Kakamega Senator, Honorable Speaker, um, I think that is a succession dispute or issue, not necessarily a dispute, but a succession process that has to go through the court. I, I think the, the best way is to possibly collect the necessary information, the schools uh, names that have those challenges in your county, and uh, then the owners of the land. If the cases are in court, we can have the details of the court cases by way of a letter, 
and all necessary details appertaining to those school titrings. And uh, I will be able, I have of course a council, a litigation council in my office. They will be able to liaise with the Attorney General and the Office of the Public uh, Trustee. And I'm sure we can be, be, it will take a bit of time, but it is doable. Sometimes it just requires to call the family that has either donated the land or that has sold the land and sit with them, just, and then you find a, a solution. I am willing to take up that, that exercise, if I'm given the necessary information. We can liaise with you, Honorable Senator. Thank you. Last one by Senator Kavid Wagnis. No, no. Honorable Senator, let me give further guidance, because the CS has uh, two more questions. To make progress, we can go to the next question, and then I will request the CS to, even if the the question can, can come on titling of the school, public schools, still she will be able to handle that. So to make progress, let's get the last one from Senator Agnes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I first of all want to congratulate the Madam CS for the good work that she's doing. Uh, but at the same time, I have complaints about Machako's, uh, the registrar office, for issuing title deeds. They are having a lot of delays there, and uh, we only have that registrar in Machako's uh, sub-county. And uh, as far as Masinga, they travel all the way to come to Machako's to come and uh, get their title deeds, even Yata and everywhere else in Machako's. And whenever they go there, they are told to come back tomorrow. They can go there, stay the whole day. Nobody is uh, telling them anything. I went down uh, doing my public participation on oversight. And some of the, my citizens were complaining that uh, whenever they go there, there is a registry book. They are told to pay 10,000 shillings. And uh, they are not issued with a receipt. And they are told to come back. And they never see this money. They never get their title deeds. Madam uh, C.S., can you uh, kindly explain what is happening in the registrar office, in the lands, lands registrar office, for issuing title deeds in Machakos? Thank you. Uh, see, Madam C.S. And if also you have a plan of uh, uh, distributing some other offices in those other sub-counties. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Senator for Machakos, Senator Kavindu. First, uh, my registrar in uh, Machakos is Dorothy Retting, and Dorothy has other four registrars. So in terms of number of registrars, we do have uh, some sufficient number considering the total numbers that I have. Secondly, we have uh, noted the, the, the workload in Machakos County is huge, and we have gazetted new registration units no, registries, that is Mavoko and Kitimani. I will be having a minimum of a registrar for each for a start, and I hope to be able to post two registrars for the two registration uh, registries. And I think that would answer to some of the delays that have been occasioned. In terms of, you talked of some integrity issues, uh, maybe that is for me corruption. But uh, I will pick it up with the legislator in charge. There is, um, there is no reason why people should come three, four times to look for their titles. They need to, we, we have already given instructions that they must work with time, timelines so that once you come, once you make your application, you allow time to register and then just come second time is to collect your title unless the records are not there. But I know that uh, these answers will be answered finally through digitization process that we have already taken up and we'll be hoping that we can complete the exercise nationally in the next two years. Thank you, uh, Honorable CS. Honorable Senators, now let's go to question number 018 by the Senator for Nairobi County, Honorable Edwin Sifuna. I understand it's 017. No, no, we, 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 
I've been done since Senator Sifuna towards his mission part. Yeah, zero one. Eight. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wanted the CS uh, for Lands, Public Works, Housing and Urban Development to answer the following three questions, Mr. Speaker. Number one, who holds the title deed for the parcel of land on which the Tomboya Social Hall in Makadara constituency, Nairobi City County, stands? And could the Cabinet Secretary indicate the ownership history of the said parcel of land? B, could the Cabinet Secretary explain the circumstances under which the parcel of land came into the custody or possession of a private developer who has already commenced construction works on a mall? Number C, what measures has the Ministry put in place to reclaim public land, including this land in Makadara, that has been illegal, illegally acquired or encroached upon, as well as generally forestalled land grabbing in the city of Nairobi? I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Madam CS. Uh, in response to the Honorable Senator for Nairobi County, Senator Sifuna, Honorable Senator Edwin Sifuna, he wants to know what is the fate of Tom Boyer Social Hall. Honorable Speaker, I have given an answer in response, which is written, uh, Tom Boyer Memorial Hall sits on plot number 79 stroke, block number 79 stroke 782, formerly the number I have given there, LR number 209 stroke 11046. The plot was reserved to the Ministry of Public Works, that is my ministry, for development of a community hall on June 26, 1957, through an order of the governor then. The plot was leased to Kanu, Kenya African National Union Party, for three years from 1967, on condition that the party pays rent of hmm, shillings one. The land remains government land, and the party remains, th that's the condition, that the land was to remain still owned by the public works, and then the party responsible for maintenance of the building is the Kanu party during that uh, terms of the lease for those three years. Kanu then thereafter applied for allocation of, pl of the plot in 1985. A letter of allotment was issued in favor of the party on 12th April 1985 for a term of 99 years with effect from March 1985, the user of the plot was social hall still and offices. A next year that we have given an next year of that detail. And uh, then thereafter, Kanu did not pay the statutory fees in, uh, indicated in the allotment letter of 10th of April 2018. The offer had since lapsed and have given uh, also supporting an extra there, number three. A lease for Nairobi block 79 stroke 782, measuring 0 0.403 hectares, that is about one acre of land, at Peppercorn rent was prepared in favor of Kanu and registered on April 25th, or 20, yeah, 25th April 2018, I've given details in support. Honorable Speaker, on 22nd of February 2021, the parcel was then transferred to GAMI. Was uh, transferred to GAMI Limited, GAMI Properties Limited. Give me CR2. Yes, to GAMI Properties uh, Limited, I have also given supporting document to support that. The parcel having been registered as a social hall should remain as such. Honorable Speaker, uh, that is the status of that parcel. It's a public land. Honorable Senator for Nairobi, I 
want to confirm standing on this floor that Gami Properties Limited got an irregular allocation and I will proceed to cancel that title. It is going to remain public property. Yeah. And maybe that I will uh, leave a copy of the CR12 to show the individuals that own Gami Properties Limited. My office obviously misbehaved by allowing this. But that was done jointly with the National Land Commission. We will work together using a Section 79 of the Land Legislation Act. Thank you. Honorable um, CS, I thought you just handle the three parts uh, A, B, and C, and then the rest of the question can maybe. Uh, he had enforcing strict penalties, digitization. Well, I think you have answered that you have. Your I last think I had. Part, I, think I, summarized I had said yes. I had said that we are working on digitization. We'll need support of Parliament through budget. We have already finished Nairobi. We are doing Muranga and Isioro, or digitization or the scanning in Muranga and Isioro is almost done, and we'll be going live in those two other counties soon. So this progress will be expected, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Thank you Honorable CS. With the way uh, Senator Spuna is happy, I don't think he has a supplementary question. <laughs> <laughs> he has already confirmed. Okay, Senator Sifuna. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I, I was, I was uh, I was a bit worried when I was reading the uh, written response from the CS because it did not have the last bit there, which is the most critical bit for the people of Nairobi, on the action to be taken. I am more than happy to confirm or to hear from her that she's going to cancel the allocation because the offer to Kanu had lapsed, so they had no title to transfer. They did not, in fact, deserve to be given that title, and there was nothing to transfer to Gami Properties. I am also happy that she has told the, the nation that she's going to provide the ownership details of Gami Properties Limited. Madam Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, the only thing I want the CS to confirm to me is the timeline when we can expect cancellation of that particular title, reversion back to the people of Nairobi of the property, and the reconstruction of Tomboya Social Hall. Mr. Speaker, because as we speak today, construction on that property is still ongoing. They are building a mall. So, Mr. Speaker, the timelines of those actions if the CS, uh, who has already made my day, can just add the topping to the cake, uh, I will be very happy for the people of Nairobi to hear when we can expect this time, uh, this, this action to be taken. And Mr. Speaker, continue to protect us from hecklers in this house because we are discussing serious issues here about people who, rep who we represent and people are heckling Senator here. Sifuna, you are doing so. Senator Gloria, Senator Gloria. Must you always make you noise in this house, honestly speaking? No, no, it's not in order, honestly. Um, I heard uh, the CS say that she's intended uh, to give, uh, I, we want them to table a document. Oh, the, we, the, I think this is online, actually, CR12, to show the owners of Gami. This was, uh, you know, Honorable Speaker, I came yesterday back to the country, but uh, I ordered for that, and it is available. Those are the current directors of Ngami Properties Limited. Yeah, the supplementary question, maybe... Like the I think he wanted to know the timeline. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, under Section 79 of the Land Registration Act. I think I will need the notice. Uh, the process that we undertake is when we realize that illegality has been committed, either or a mistake by our registry, we need to issue a notice to the holders of that title, and that notice is supposed to take, uh, with, you know, it's a notice of 60 days. So I will take up the process immediately so you can expect that uh, then the notice is to call the person the holder of the title to return the title failing which then we proceed to cancel it in most cases when they know it was an untoward activity 
normally they do not uh, present themselves because you present yourself and the title for cancellation or at least for interrogation. Once you don't come, we proceed to cancel. So it should not take me more than uh, 60 days to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Let us get a few supplementary questions. Start from Recha Julia, Senator Recha Julius. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I would like to know from the minister, there is a piece of land which was given by Pokot County Council to KVDA uh, around 1986 or 83, and it is a dam today which uh, is generating power. And so uh, to mark the end of the uh, occupied land or the land that uh, is today uh, under a dam, they put pagans, uh, or pagans, uh which marked the end that Wananchi would develop up to there or leave uh, up to there. But now, uh, maliciously, some um, MPs uh, are grouping against uh, KVDA and saying that uh, they sold the land off to some unknown uh, personalities, but the accusation is so high on the ground. So I was wondering if the minister is aware and um, uh, uh, what uh, does she um, say so that uh, as an answer to those who are accusing uh, KVDA or some leaders of uh, selling the land that today is a dam producing or generating power uh, to Kenya at large. Uh, Senator, as you know, as I guided, as much as practically possible, let us just direct our question towards the original question. Uh, the CS can attempt to answer, but uh, such details might be a bit uh, difficult to get. So, uh, Madam CS. Thank you for the direction, Honorable Speaker. It's, it's, it's true that I'm not able to respond to uh, that because it has not been brought to my notice area, but KVDA is actually um, an agency or parastatal under the Ministry of uh, East Africa, uh, East Africa Community, Regional Development, and ASALS. And uh, they would have the details of that particular problem. But Honorable Senator can also write to me, and maybe, or to myself and the Minister for East Africa Region, and give us these details. And then we can uh, try to help and resolve the problem. I, I don't know whether it's a problem where the dam has. Uh, gone and cloached. You know, sometimes dams exceed the area of the design. Therefore, a redesign may be necessary. It could be a case where maybe compensation is not complete or a case where people are trying to use the dam to get the land or use the land that has already been purchased around the dam. I think I will leave it to you, but you can write to the two ministries for better responses. Overall, your uh, Honourable Speaker, I was asked about recovery of other public lands. Honourable Speaker, let me say that uh, we, we are in the process of discussing with the Office of the President through, uh, through hopes, and uh, we intend to move the Cabinet for a resolution to allow the Minister to request for all ministries to forward their public lands that are in danger or have been encroached or have been uh, grabbed so that holistically I can address all of them because it's not possible for the Minister of Lands to know which land has been uh, encroached or has been grabbed. But I think it is, as a government, we have a duty. As a ministry, I have a, a, a responsibility to assist the government to protect and recover and document public land existing and what may have been taken away and recover as much as we can, including prosecution of people who have been found
to have stolen public land. Obviously, you see, even the Minister for Lands is not safe because this particular uh, parcel that Tomboya uh, is on belongs to the public, Ministry of Public Works. Indeed, Honorable Speaker, when I went to Kwale, to Kitare, I want to confirm that uh, Kitare prison, is it the medium or maximum, is sitting on an individual's uh, parcel of land. So <laughs> I'm also proceeding to cancel those because the prison itself is sitting on land that has been glabbed over 3,000 parcels of land. So it is not an easy matter. We have to do what is right, and as the support of Parliament, including these kind of questions, is helpful. Thank you. Senator Mandago, you are on the queue at the top. Uh, maybe you can ask you a question. But I don't know, you have a problem with uh, that book, this first book. Maybe the clerks can assist me with uh, my card. Uh, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. I, have, um, I don't know whether it's a question or a suggestion to the Cabinet Secretary. On this digitization, um, Honorable Speaker, I'd like to ask the Cabinet Secretary, what happens with lands that are that are disputes during digitization process? And I ask that because, uh, Honorable Speaker, there is a land in question in Wasingishu County between the people of Wasingishu, the county government of Wasingishu, and the um, Department of Defense. But during digitization, you know, uh, a title that was fraudulently acquired was also digitized. So my request to the Honorable CS is during digitization, I think all lands under dispute should not be digitized because digitizing is further giving legitimacy you know, to the fraudulently acquired titles. Number two, Honorable Speaker, the CS has said she has, she's constrained in terms of budget for titling of schools. Honorable Speaker, it is my view that now that schools receive even capitation for operations, and it only costs a maximum of 20,000 to actually get a title deed, schools should actually be asked to process their own titles. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The son of CS. Did I hear the senator is proposing that we ask the schools to process their own titles? Uh, I think then that would require me to move back to the cabinet to have the cabinet uh, resolve to do that. I don't see a big problem in uh, the government. The schools are properties of the government, actually. The land is not necessarily in the name of school. It's reserved for that school, but the titles belong to the National Treasury, and they are registered in the name of National Treasury. So I think for us to assist to proceed to do that is important. And you also know that that is the only way we can be able to assure the validity, uh, the sizes, the survey, uh, integrity and and therefore i think it's not a bad thing that the ministry is the one that is finally doing it you can imagine this is since 1960 this has not been done so i think we will not be able to leave to the schools again some of the people around the schools are the ones who have grabbed some of the school land in that process we'll be able to return the any grabbed land on the question on digitization what happens to parcels that may be having disputes or have titles or records that are uh, in dispute or are uh, under interrogation and investigation. First, we, will, we, we capture the records that we have. But capturing the records we have uh, by scanning and putting them in as part of our digitization does not mean we will be hindered from interrogating those documentations. But also the KDF land, I think you are referring to the KDF land. We, ha we have cancelled all those titles, so we don't longer have any problem. But where we have uh, captured the wrong or disputed land, maybe it is in court, and then we get the new record or other records to say otherwise, other than what is in our digital system, we will move to, to put that as part of our record and it is possible within that because as we digitize we are also using the land laws that exist so i don't think there is going to be any compromise or danger in our in our work yeah, thank you senator Sosi. godfrey 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have two questions, two supplementary questions to this. You choose the, the one, one which is heavy. The one which is, you consider only one supplementary. Very well. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to know from the CS the compensation plan they have on lands which were compulsorily acquired by the government before the onset of devolution. Uh, I am saying this because, Mr. Speaker, there is a sad case of an old man who died four years ago and is still lying in the mug uh, from a place called Kegoye within uh, Vihiga municipality. What happened, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, when Vihiga was gazetted as a district by the then President Moy, there were some people who were relocated to create space for the construction of the district headquarters. And this old man was one of them. They were relocated to a place in Lugari Forest. And when they went there, they found that the land had complication. So they returned back to, to their original land. They have stayed there for years. The old man died there. When he died, they took the body to the morgue, but they could not bury because the county government contested and said that that land is within the Vihiga municipality. Up to the date, the body, body of the old man is still lying in the mug. I brought this matter when I was in the National Assembly in 2021. And the then CS for Lands, uh, Madam Carone, made a commitment to Parliament that the matter was going to be resolved in six months. Mr. Speaker, it is now approaching two and a half years. Nothing has been done. What is the CS aware of this matter? And what specific action is she going to take to address this matter so that this family can bury their old man as soon as possible and stop incurring uh, mortuary uh, fees? Given that this family, even though the county government has refused and the answer that we gave, if you have, but I will also, because I have my chief land registrar, Mr. Nyandoro, here with me, I will ask him to take up and check the records, and if there is something I can do, depending on the commitment that the minister made, because I believe she made on behalf of the ministry, I will uh, action on the matter. However, I think also the county and yourself, Honorable Speaker, with the greatest respect, I think it's a matter that the county should have been able to resolve and help the family. But I will, on my part, see what, why the minister had said she would be in a position to deal with the matter and uh, revert back to the Honorable Senator, not necessarily on the floor, but I can uh, get back to him with a relevant answer. Thank you. Yes, I advise that the Senator so you can uh, approach the ministry any time to the CS office and see how you can be able to revive that issue. According to the answers the CS is giving, definitely she will be able to sort that matter. The way she had sorted the Tomboya Hall, community hall. What is it again, Senator Sosi? Mr. Speaker, I think uh, because the matter was raised uh, in the last parliament where I served with the CS and uh, the answers were provided by the then CS, I think they need to check their files. They will be able to get the answers. But, uh, but I will uh, oblige to provide the responses to the CS. What they gave them. If you want to help those people, don't, don't refer the CS to the files. Just initiate your own do an initiative with the CS and she will be able to assist you. But if you refer to the files, you know, and she has directed you to see her in the office and say you can sort out the matter, I think uh, that is fair enough. Uh, well guided. May, Mr. Speaker, I'll make an effort to see the CS okay. over that. Senator Roba. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for this opportunity. First of all, I want to congratulate the Cabinet Secretary for a job well done. 
Um, we can see the output of your ministry. I'm even sure uh, Senator Sifuna was surprised that you gave a straight answer on his uh, issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have one question. On this particular um, issue on shared functions, we have shared functions under housing, under public works, um, and my question is, at what point is the ministry actually going to initiate um, a program of releasing the assets uh, to the counties in terms of the shared, um, in terms of the functions that have been devolved? There are some functions that have been devolved, they've gone down to counties, but some of the assets are still on national level. So is there an intention to actually release those assets to the counties so that the counties can be able to have uh, control over that the issues that have been devolved. And Mr. Speaker, uh, you know, we are, we are all equal senators and understanding Order 101, it is not proper for a senator to impute uh, uh, improper motive. I'm not a heckler. As you can see, uh, my contributions are valid. So I think uh, Senator, Sifuna, the, Senator Sifuna should understand Senator that we are, we are all equal, Mr. Senator, Speaker. Senator Roba. We are contributing. Senator Roba, you have asked your question to the CS. So do you want the CS also to comment on the issues that you are accusing, Senator? No, I've, I've, I've asked the question, but I wanted to you pass the message your on record. just raised your question at that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable CS. The, the Honorable Senator Gloria is asking about the shared functions and the assets transfer of, and I think, are you referring to transfer of functions or transfer of assets? For, for assets, the national government is working holistically to see what assets should be transferred. And uh, because I know even as we sit, most of the assets belong to the national government, they have not completely yet been transferred but there is, including functions, there is a team that is working on, uh, on the transfer of both functions and assets. So I, I want to believe that that will find, eventually find its way to Parliament when the final list is done. It's not a very simple exercise, and therefore it requires time. Thank you. Uh, let's get the last uh, supplementary question from Senator Munyaji. I can see three more senators are still on the queue, and then I'll give you an opportunity after we ask question number 017. Uh, so we make some progress, Senator Nyong. You'll have an opportunity still to uh, ask you a supplementary question. Senator Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Fagin. My question is regard to historical land justices in Mombasa. Uh, last week, and uh, I think part of this week, the National Land Commission has been holding hearings in Mombasa uh, on, in regards to historical land injustices. And uh, uh, on Friday last week, they made uh, decisions that have created panic, fear, and despondency to the residents of Mombasa, especially within the island where many are not sure of their residences or uh, places where they have stayed for almost 100 years. Initially, during the colonial uh, administration, we had uh, the system of Liwalis. And the Liwalis were registered by virtue of their positions as trustees on behalf of the residents. However, when they, uh, the Liwalis uh, passed on, these properties were transferred or were inherited uh, through the succession system and now are uh, no longer public or uh, public properties, but they have now ended up in the hands of the relatives of the Liwalis. And this one has caused a lot of problems because they are charging a minimum of five million for a plot measuring uh, 50 by 80 or 50 by 100 within uh, the central business district. So Madam CS, we wanted to know what is the government doing to assure these residents of their uh, residences and also to resolve this long-standing problem that has affected Mombasa Island and also part of uh, Kisauni and parts of Changamo and Likoni areas of Mombasa County. Thank you. 
Honorable CS. Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Senator, is it of for Mombasa? Yes, uh, has raised a very important question, and I believe that that question is not a supplementary question. It requires to be put in writing so that I can be able to respond to you, especially noting that the activities that you have referred to are activities being carried out by the National Land Commission. You know Land National Land Commission is also an independent body, but uh, we work together. Sometimes they are able to consult, and sometimes I'm also able to consult them. So I would, uh, with the permission of the speaker, I would advise and request that that question be forwarded formally, either through the Senate or directly to the Cabinet Secretary, and I try to answer, because it's, it's not necessary that if I can answer, I don't have to come to answer it on the floor. So I would leave it to you, Honorable Senator, through the speaker. I think uh, Senator Mohamed Faki, that's a good guidance, because I also felt it's a weight matter that he needs some good response. Honorable Speaker, it's, uh, I, I, I agree with the CS that uh, we need to put in a, a separate question. However, I have another small supplementary on affordable houses, Mr. Speaker. You'll ask me in the, during the next question. Thank you. Because actually it is related to the question by Senator Mohamed Nfaki. So let us have question number 017 by the Senator for Malsabit County. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Question 017, could the Cabinet Secretary, one, indicate the respective value of each parcel of government-owned land that has been designated for the affordable housing projects in Nairobi, Mombasa, Nakuru, and Kisumu counties, and indicate how many of the said parcel, parcels are currently being or have been developed since 2017. Two, state the value of parcel of land assigned to respective developers for the construction of affordable housing, and could the Cabinet Secretary indicate the project cost per square meter of each housing unit, as well as the interest rate to be charged to buyers of those units? Three, state how many of the houses under the project are under public-private partnership arrangements, and could the Cabinet Secretary state the respective percentage contribution of the government vis-a-vis -vis the developers. Number four, halt all transactions involving public land until mutually beneficial formula to both the government and developers is agreed upon. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Madam CS, respond to the, three, the four sections. Honorable Speaker, may I take first allow me to take this opportunity to thank the Senate, the honorable members of the Senate, the entire Senate, for supporting the uh, affordable housing uh, levy bill that uh, came through the Senate. After an elaborate uh, discussion, we have now a, a law that was assented to on 19th of March by His Excellency. The, thank you very much for your participation and approval. Honorable Speaker, the question by the Honorable Senator for Masabit, and I also appreciate that he's on board because he has invented an apology. Uh, we should be able to work together. Since 2017, Honorable Speaker, the government, I, I want to go to the four questions. I think his question is in four parts, as you have rightly pointed out, Honorable Speaker. He, the first one, of course, he's asking me to indicate the value of each parcel of government-owned uh, land that has been designated for affordable housing project in Nairobi, Mobasa, Nakuru, and Kisumu counties, and indicate how many of the parcels are currently being or have been developed since 2017. Since 2017, the government has identified and designated about 575 land parcels, totaling to about 
12,000 acres distributed across the country. These parcels were submitted by the ministries, individual ministries, uh, counties, departments. Okay, Madam Sears, yes. because this, uh, I can see your response is quite long eh? Yes. and very elaborate. So I wanted to get from the Honorable Member whether he has been able to go through this response so that we can save some time. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have, which yes. specific section do you feel yes. that you need? Uh, then I can be directed yes, yes, to that. To that yes. particular thank part you. of thank the you. Uh, Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'm uh, satisfied. Because with let the, me finish. The answers are finish. Okay. Yeah, Because I'm, the way you have really appreciated and you also said you are now on board. <laughs> it's like this question <laughs> was Honorable before. Speaker. Or you asked this question before, now you, you came on board yes. with that act. Honorable Speaker, I, I have, I've gone through the, the answers and I'm happy and comfortable with the answers, but I have a, a supplementary questions. You have no, yeah, good. Then if there is any other member on affordable housing, like Senator, uh, first to inquire to Senator Mohamed Faki. You said you have no supplementary questions. I have, right? I, have sub two, uh, I have supplementary questions. Oh, okay. Uh, Just yes. ask your supplementary questions so that it can be specific. We Thank you. Uh, minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Article 43 1B is very clear on the issue of uh, uh, settling people. Uh, and uh, I wanted the Cabinet Secretary to note that we had former Buxton tenants who came who, in fact, brought a petition to this house. And I am uh, in the Committee of Housing, Roads and Housing, and we d decided and agreed that these people should be resettled, 184 in number, to be given the first priority to be resettled in Buxton Estate. I would want the Cabinet Secretary to tell us if these people are going to be settled, when they are going to be settled, and if she can give a, an appointment through this house for those people to come and sit with her and finalize this matter. Uh, the, issue, the other issue I have is uh, on rural housing. The cabinet uh, secretary is aware that we've passed, uh, the amended law has the issue, a component of rural housing. I want to know in her regulations, what is she going to do for those people who cannot afford urban housing, who want to, reset, who want to settle in Marsabit, Isiolo, Wajia, and all those places. How uh, is she going to cater for those people that can be settled in those areas? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Madam CSS. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Um, the Honorable Senator is, um, has been following on the issue of uh, the tenants that had occupied the land in the Buxton uh, uh, project in Mombasa, you call, they are number 184, according to the Honorable Senator. Mm -hmm. it, if these people have leadership, because I don't want uh, to confirm that you can bring 184 uh, people into my office, but if they have leadership, then the leadership can uh, actually uh, visit me or you wait when I go to Mombasa because maybe I, I can plan better go to Mombasa and we deal it at that level instead of them coming all the way to Nairobi. Uh, so we then we can see what issues are still remaining but in the meantime those issues can be documented and forwarded to me through your office honorable senator or through the leadership. I suppose these people have some leadership. Through their leadership, they can document the issues, send to me, and then looking at the issues, then I'll be able to make a decision to either visit, uh, go to Mombasa, and uh, we have a meeting there in Mombasa. On the question of rural housing, uh, Honorable Speaker, I think this was a provision that this Senate found necessary in our affordable housing uh, 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 law. And uh, we obviously, as a ministry, our work is to implement. We are preparing the regulations. And I, for me, I think what is important is, I believe Senate will be part of that uh, preparation. I may not give, be able to give a concrete answer because this will require us to examine materials, technology, and the budget. And of course, the, the 
the pr probability, how do we, in terms of economics of scale, how do we manage to, who and how do we deal with in terms of our rural setup? As, as you can uh, imagine, we are talking about the whole country, there will be need for a budget, we need to rationalize, and we need to see what is suitable, and whatever material that government puts in money on, that material must also be put in the code, the building code that approves materials, and actually the building code is coming to the house. And, and therefore, it is not an answer that you can get immediately, but it is something that we will all work on. Of course, we need to look at technology as part of the solutions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Onyonka, Richard. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, <coughs> the reason why you saw I was nearly becoming anxious was because I have not had an opportunity to meet the CS before she became the CS because the last time I was with her she was making a political commentary on TV and she was saying we will win and you will lose and I said no you will lose and we will win and then she told me in fact Uhuru and his friends and everybody will go and then I'm shocked now the other side is now telling Mamangina sorry we are coming to be with you sorry so I was excited Mr. Speaker to see her because I have utmost respect for her. Madam CS, I also want to uh, sincerely thank you for confirming Mr. Nyandoro. You know he happens to come from where he does, but I'm happy that you looked at meritocracy and agreed to give the best qualified person the job. I really thank you for that. Mr. Speaker, the question I, supplementary question I'm asking the CS is maybe suggestive. Would the minister be comfortable to actually confirm to this house that the issues that, that are bedeviling the Ministry of Lands and the land question in this country is because of very simple things. For example, we have no special planning which is completed. We do not know which pieces of land were allocated and who allocated them and whether they suffice on the legality of their existence that the issues that you have that are in Kitale right now about prisons land are really questions which are historical and that the challenges we have is that the institutions that are supposed to function and indeed one, uh, one of the, those institutions is her ministry has been unable to perform and deliver on the issue of land. Would the minister be comfortable to tell this house whether therefore it's possible that she can make sure that in the shortest time possible we have spatial planning and so that we can be able to do what the Rwanda government has done and Mr. Speaker what is shocking or maybe not shocking is that the people who did the special planning for the country known as Rwanda are Kenyans and they are known. Is it possible that we can also do that so that when somebody is buying land or when somebody has been allocated land or when somebody is having a problem with their land they can immediately know, have the detail, the size of the land, the location of the land, the value of the land, and any development on that land. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Um, uh, Madam CS. Honorable Speaker, uh, I want to take uh, the commendation and the congratulatory note from the Honorable Senator in humility because uh, he knows that we did very many debates with him at the national television and uh, many times he would get very upset with my contributions uh, but uh, that was for debate purposes and I warned him severally, he refused to listen and I, I hope that I have permission to speak like that on this floor, but uh, I hope he I'm can... I the two of you to exchange <laughs> that presenter. Thank you, thank you. Are you sure I hope he will the, read the signs now early, uh, so that uh, then we can be on the same page. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but um, say, suffice to say that uh, he is a very ardent, very, very able debater, and uh, we, we really benefited, all of us, from his contributions during the debates. 
uh, may I say, Honorable Speaker, that uh, he raises very fundamental issue in terms of what is ailing the entire ministry in respect of especially then the land tenure, land security. The question of land security is critical, is key. And uh, we, as we plan, we are planning with that in mind because we would want to guarantee security of uh, tenure and security of records. And that's why we have agreed as a government, as a ministry, to go digital, to digitize, to ensure that you can at least, you know, the stories, even today, Honorable Speaker, as I stand here, I get very upset because then my, 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 my officers know that I have said that there is no way you can give me a response that the file is missing. Whenever a file is missing, there is some funny business going on or some irregularities uh, likely to be committed by disappearance of a file. But uh, this is something that the country must also now agree, and I take the opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to, to, urge, to urge the public not to take matters, land security, casually and not to engage in buying land that they have not received a proper certification in terms of searches and record checks by the land registries. Having said that, I have also told the government officers managing our registries that they will take personal responsibilities. And we have so far, Honorable Speaker, taken I think three or four Two are under suspension since I came in, and the two are already facing court charges because of uh, irregular uh, recording or documentation of land. It's, it's, quite a, it's quite a task. The answer will be technology, use of technology and digitization, and therefore, Honorable Senator, I, th I believe as a country, that is something we must aspire, and that's what we should be looking forward to. I should be made uh, put to task to be able during my tenure to complete digitization. We have two types of spatial planning, the county spatial planning and the national uh, spatial planning. The national spatial planning is, is, is basically complete. The challenge we are having is the county spatial planning. and. Uh, the governors have not taken up this without appearing to accuse the counties. Uh, they have a challenge. Very few have taken up. I think, I, I, if, I, if I'm correct, about 10 counties are on course. The others are not on course. It's a very important aspect to have spatial planning because if you don't, and then of course, if the spatial lack of planning is a is planning to fail, and therefore I am also calling upon the counties to take up this task very seriously. We are in the process also of doing necessary geospatial surveys, uh, mapping and uh, georeferencing. This is an exercise that is going on, CADESTA uh, preparations uh, for purposes of us to be able to digitize. We have to use those two things, the cadaster preparation and, of course, uh, georeferencing. Then we'll be able to resolve many disputes relating to even survey and, uh, and, and boundaries. And, and therefore, I think we, we, this government will be on course. We, that's where we need to put our money into in terms of these questions, and we, we will be able to deal with the... Uh, Lad grabbers may be up to maybe eight, maybe a hundred percent if need be. I have no tolerance with them. Some of them have called me arrogant, honorable speaker. Even if they are facing court cases for whatever, I know some of them are very unhappy, but some of them are also very influential, and therefore we need to just use our documentation properly so that we can keep away uh, people who want to to steal both public land and private land. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That was uh, a long uh, number one question from Onyonka because it involved three, three parts, political, social, and, the right, and then the question. 
Honorable Senators, we have four Senators on the queue and we didn't need to close with the, the CS for, for lands. I want to share maybe two, one and a half minutes each, every member. And uh, Honorable CS, if you don't have the exact question, you can even go and give the, the answers later, later yes. so that we can uh, make some progress. So, Senator Vazishek. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, Honorable Speaker, I want to ask that uh, uh, CS, that uh, among the proposed units, which is actually under construction already, is Wajia. Wajia, I've, I've seen some houses under construction in Wajia Township. So may I know how many units is being built in Wajia Township? Uh, how many floors will those uh, houses go? Because Wajia has actually many challenges in terms of, you know, the solid structure and uh, sanitation problems and sewage because of the, the, the high level of water, uh, Wajia is still experiencing sewage problems. So I don't know whether the project has considered all those factors uh, which have been undertaken now because sewage problem, Wajia has no sewage. It has sewage problems, it has water problem, uh, and the, the solid structure actually is you know, sandy. And uh, if you will be building, you know, houses, with, high-rise high, high, high houses, uh, you might uh, experience some challenges. So I wanted to know how many there are, what is actually the height of this, how many, how many flows, and whether you have taken care of any consideration of uh, the sewage systems and all these things that are not existing or just now. Uh, so I want to know from the CS whether that's a, a, a question you can answer now or maybe you provide the answer later to the Honourable uh, The Wajia. Wajia, we have 220 units that are coming up, 220 units uh, of different uh, categories. The original design was, is for social, affordable, and a few market uh, units, and therefore it, that one is on course. Uh, let me say that uh, for purposes of this house, that we shall have county projects at county level, but we shall also have constituency level projects. This Wajia is one of the constituency level, I say constituency because we are also using constituency as a unit to ensure equitable distribution of this project because they, for us, they mean a lot. For the people of Kenya, they mean a lot because they mean employment, they mean economic uh, sparring, and they mean a lot of economic activities around the projects, including employing the youths single project like this one will have between 300 and 400 uh, youths, uh, not, with, uh, not forgetting the other uh, issues that arise, you know, people working, the shops around receive this money, you know, it's, it's not a bad project. So every constituency will have and we will endeavor to do that in the course of our term, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Senator Delito John. Can you? One uh, th thank, you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for me, I want to congratulate the Minister and uh, to ask her, apart from the creations that were mentioned by Chute concerning the rural affordable housing, for that to be very effective, uh, Mr. Speaker, we need to ensure that we, have, uh, we provide land ownership documents to the owners of the land. I just wanted to know what is she doing uh, and especially to the people living in the slums, because they're the people who need even those homes more than the other people. Mr. Speaker, you come to places like Laikipia, you go to a village called Maina Village, they don't have uh, title deeds. You go to a place like Rikie, Majengo, they don't have their title deeds. Mr. Speaker, I just wanted to know, uh, apart from the, those villages in Laikipia, what is she doing concerning the land ownership, for especially those people living in the villages, and in rural areas, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Madam CS. Uh, when you say villages, Honorable Senator, I, if you mean colonial villages, I had uh, already answered that question and said that uh, during my tenure, I'm going to finish titering for all the colonial villages. Now, uh, villages like, uh, or areas like um, Kwamaina or Maina, 
I know where it is. And there are many like that where titling is a problem because most of the times the land does not, indeed the land does not belong to the people living there. There are parcels of, uh, there, there are parcels of lands or land just given to them either by the chiefs or by people who just come and grab and they start issuing titles uh, in, in, in wherever they find empty land. It is not easy to first issue titles because any titles do follow planning. And uh, the way most of those houses are built, you'll find that uh, even planning for roads, for sewerage purposes or facilities becomes very complicated. But I know I'm aware that minor, minor area of... Uh, between Nyandarwa, is, is it Nyandarwa or is it in Laikipia? It's in Laikipia. It's, uh, we have been asked to do titling and we are looking at it. We are honorable senator, I can give you details of whether that will be done. And it's, it's quite a task, but we will endeavor to see because also the cases of how small can you go in terms of the parcel of land also becomes a big challenge. Some people have own places that are not even 0 0.000 something, and therefore you can imagine that it is not an easy task. But we, and policy, I'm coming back to this house before June with the national land policy. Uh, so I think I have answered that question. Uh, sure. In terms of regulations, you can help us to think through because we will be coming to you. I, Honorable Speaker, I did not answer the question on water and sanitation and sewerage by Honorable Senator for, for Wajia, but he knows that uh, that issues of sewerage, where, where we build, Honorable where we have a project, we endeavor to provide necessary facilities working with other government agencies, whether it is water or sewerage, we will ensure, of course, there is connectivity, and if there is no sewerage, then we will be able to provide necessary uh, sewage system for that specific project. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Um, Senator Mohamed Faki. Honorable Speaker, one. my question is regard to the affordable housing. Uh, uh, there are members of uh, the civil service or public service who are staying in the uh, Botella estates in Nairobi, uh, Shaurimoyo, and uh, part of Jogorod, where they have been issued with notices to vacate uh, their houses for construction of new units. On the speaker, these units were constructed about 10 years ago during the Kibaki administration. And they are fairly modern and uh, new uh, houses. And uh, I'm wondering why is the government demolishing such units at a time when people do not have houses? Thank you. Can I combine with the supplementary question from the Nairobi Senator? Maybe it might involve the same projects. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, when the CS appeared before us as the Housing Committee, we did uh, explain to her uh, our objections to the Housing Act and uh, explain to her that it was on principle. I'm sure she's aware that we in the minority are still going to ask the courts to have the last say, led by Senator Umtata. Mr. Speaker, the question that was raised by my colleague from uh, uh, Mombasa, Faki, in fact, the ministry has given uh, the residents of uh, Jogorod Phase 1 and 2 Jamaa, Botella, Ahero, and Mawenzi Gardens to vacate their houses uh, by the end of April. Of uh, uh, by the end of April, uh, that is 30th April 2024. And if you see the uh, the notice that has been sent to residents, uh, contains a clause here that says uh, that tenants will be accorded priority to purchase or rent a house once the redevelopment is complete. In addition to the uh, question that has been raised by Faki. Because, Mr. Speaker, if you see, I have a photo of those houses here. These are not houses that uh, you can compare to the houses, say, in uh, uh, Lumumba Estate that were built in the 50s. These houses are less than 10 years old. What rationale, what is the rationale of demolishing such houses to build something that will look exactly like this, Mr. Speaker? We believe it is a wastage of public resources. Number two, Mr. Speaker, can the CS confirm whether there are agreements that have been signed 
by this, uh, between the, the ministry and these residents that will guarantee them what the ministry is saying in these uh, this, uh, notices. Because, Mr. Speaker, this was the same story in Baxter that the residents were told. When the houses were built, it became another story. And because we said we don't want another Baxter, I want the CS to assure me as a Senator of Nairobi that agreements have been signed with the current residents of these estates that they will actually be given first priority when the units are rebuilt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, that's the last uh, supplementary question for the CA, to the CS uh, lands. So we'll summarize that uh, question, the two questions from the two senators. Then, uh, we call it Andy. I, I think the questions are basically the same. The two questions regarding uh, Shaurimoyo, Botera, the various estates that uh, we gave along Jogo Road that uh, we gave uh, notices for people to vacate. We have had, uh, we have been, because we also listen, as a government, as a ministry, we listen. And I know this question was raised by Honorable Senator for Nairobi when I appeared before them, before the passing of the housing levy bill. I believe he's now on board. If he's, and uh, if he's not, I'm sure he'll soon be on board. I hope he'll be on board because this housing program is a useful project for the people of Kenya. I, I, want to say that for the Botera, Shaurimoyo, we are coming up with various projects there because the land is a lot and the number of people using those houses and those houses, you agree with me, honorable senator, honorable members, through the speaker, that they are houses that uh, do not hold a total of maybe 3,000 or 2,000 people. But when you look at the entire land and what we can do with affordable housing, I think it would be in putting the land into better use because we also, as a ministry, manage, land, manage the land and the land use is under my docket. Therefore, we have agreed this Monday and also last week, my teams from the ministry, uh, Department of uh, Housing, visited these places uh, and there is an agreement. I have been advised that they the residents are now in agreement and we are extending the notice to October, November, depending on where we, October, November, and uh, we will, we have also agreed that we shall give them relocation, uh, we shall facilitate relocation as people affected by the project. It's a small amount of money and I believe uh, His Excellency has expressed himself on that. As a ministry, we do provide some little uh, amount of money for the location. You can pay your rent, depending on the agreement in each particular place. Between six months and one year, we are able to provide the rent for similar, or at least noting that many of them are even paying rent where they are. And they are able to tell us how much rent they are paying. So we give that for six months, and there is an agreement and the notice will be extended, and uh, it will be in writing. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you. I think Adam, I've yes. answered the entire question. <coughs> yes. <coughs> so that is the end of the question and answer session from the CS Runs and Housing. So thank you very much, Madam CS, for your very elaborate answers. And the member who is happy today is the Senator for Nairobi. He's a very happy man because of all his issues and been addressed professionally. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. uh, welcome back to the Senate any other time that uh, we request you to avail yourself. So as and then, sir, thank you, good thank work you. that you are doing to the Kenyans. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you. Myself and my team. Yeah. Definitely. When I, when I refer to you, it's your entire team and the family. So, Honorable Senators, uh, we have now the CS for Energy, who is coming for the Senate. Maybe should be ushered in. He has two questions.
from the senator for Murang, uh, Kirinyaga, James Murango, and the senator for Malsabit County, Senator Mohamed Chute. So I don't know whether you still you have instructions. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome uh, the uh, NNGCS. Uh, thank you for finding time to come before the Senate. Uh, you are a frequent visitor to the Senate, and uh, we did really thank you that you have uh, time. You don't postpone when you ask to come. So that is a good indication that you are very ready to serve this country. So we go to the first question from the member for Kirinyaga County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to ask question number 007 on behalf of the distinguished senator for Kirinyaga, Senator James Murango. One, is the cabinet secretary aware of the breakdown of over 15 government-owned power transformers in Kirinyaga County between March and September 2023? And if so, could the cabinet secretary explain the reasons behind, behind it? And two, could the cabinet secretary explain the inordinate delay in replacing defective power transformers in Kirogo, Maendeleo, and Liagishiru village, villages within Moya constituency, despite multiple requests for their replacement? And three, uh, could the uh, cabinet secretary explain what measures the government has put in place to ensure the timely repair or replacement of defective power transformers? Thank you, Speaker. Yes, uh, you may proceed to respond to the question by Senator from Kinyaga. Uh, uh, Honorable uh, Speaker, uh, today, uh, members of the Senate, uh, good morning and happy to be here uh, this morning to respond to uh, the questions that have been raised. And like uh, has been said, uh, Honorable Chair, as speaker, I'm a frequent member here, and uh, thank you. And uh, happy to engage to address some of the challenges as we look forward to uh, building our country together. Uh, Pass uh, one, speaker, of following the letter dated February uh, 13th, uh, which was inviting us to come and respond to the uh, question which has been uh, articulated by the honorable member as to whether we are aware of the breakdown of over 15 government-owned power transformers in Kirinyaga County in the last six months and the reasons behind. Uh, and that, Chairman, I wish to note that uh, the above question had been, had, been, uh, had been asked under question number 059 on 4th October uh, 2023. Uh, honorable members, the ministry is aware and these breakdowns uh, or the breakdown in those transformers have continuously been addressed through Kenya Power, replaced them once reported. Breakdown of transformers has been experienced not only in Kirinyaga uh, County but also in different counties and they have been occasioned by incidences of vandalism of transformers and earthing insulations, illegal connections, which when they are done without due respect to the capacities of those transformers, do cause overloading, and sometimes we lose transformers every so frequently because of those illegal connections and therefore overloading of the transformers. And uh, thirdly, the faults on the low voltage lines due to trees and uh, the challenge environmental issues uh, that happen and uh, causes breakdown sometimes from time to time. Uh, honorable members, to counter these incidences and improve on reliability of the grid, the government has put up the following measures. Continuous monitoring is done on the power network to ensure failed transformers are replaced in the shortest possible time. A listing of power installation as under critical infrastructure. As a result, there is a special police unit uh, called the Energy Police Unit that is now mandated to protect all energy infrastructure 
all the way from generation, transmission, to distribution. Um, honorable members, uh, let, let me just uh, give a small background of the challenge and why we are trying to play a catch-up uh, game in this area of transformers. Uh, we've had, like I mentioned, uh, and I'll mention in the next question, serious litigation on the procurement front. When power goes off and it's a transformer right now, it's expected that we should respond immediately because it's a critical uh, service supporting hospitals, supporting critical functions. And when we lose a transformer and we have a litigation on procurement of transformers, which you may be aware lasted for between two to three years, there was so much backlog. And at one time, we had so many transformers paid for by customers up to 951. And uh, we were not able to procure because uh, of those litigation issues. Transformers which were required for funded government uh, last mile schemes uh, of up to 561, which we were not able to procure. So we did create a backlog of up to 1,700 uh, transformers and creating a challenge on addressing some of these transformers. And that is why, uh, uh, Speaker, Honorable Members, we've had this transformer challenge that sometimes looks like, why don't we immediately bring in a replacement transformer uh, when there's been a breakdown? Um, so, but Chair, uh, Speaker, Honorable Members, we are on top of this, and um, we're trying to ensure that uh, the transformer challenge is addressed once for all, uh, so that we don't have these inordinate delays in replacing uh, defective transformers. Um, I don't know whether the, 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 the next question on the inordinate delay in replacing defective power transformers in Kirogo, Maendeleo, Rishicheru village within Moya constituency, despite multiple requests for replacement, has been put to the floor. Uh, unless Senator Mbugwa is with such details, which I believe you can respond to in your next question, which is supplementary to the earlier question. Otherwise, I believe, Honorable CS, the response you've just given is specific to the first uh, question. And if there is any supplementary, I believe the Honorable Senator will be able to inquire so that you can respond to it as well. Proceed, Senator Mbugwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the supplementary question, I would like the Cabinet Secretary to ensure the country and this House that we have enough transformers in the country. And two, I would want the Cabinet Secretary to assure this House that the, he, to, to tell this House what measures is putting in place to ensure that the transformers which are coming in are not substandard. Thank you, Speaker. Honorable Sears. Um, uh, thank you again for that question. There is a current uh, procurement process going on for significant uh, number of transformers to address the shortfalls and to basically deal with the challenge that you raised in the first question and the second question. We've worked very closely and accompanying me to the House today is our Principal Secretary Alex Washira, the CEO for Kenya Power, uh, Dr. Siror, Engineer Siror, and the CEO for Ketraco, uh, Dr. John Mativo, also Engineer John Mativo. And uh, I want to confirm, uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, that we really are looking at the quality of transformers. We're not only looking at that quality of transformers, we have made transformer requirements for procurement, uh, one that can be localized uh, to our market. And we've developed standards, worked with the international community to ensure that we are able to uh, manufacture, uh, more assemble the transformers in Kenya. And in this um, procurement circle that I mentioned, we are getting adequate transformers to address the challenge of shortage. Uh, Chair, we have addressed those quality challenges so that we do not see 
the challenge of uh, transformers failing. Uh, one of the assurances, uh, honorable members of assuring ourselves on quality is to be able to be given warranty. Warranty is a statement of quality, which basically means, honorable members, if there's a breakdown, you basically replace a transformer at no cost. And we've taken all those precautions to ensure that we protect uh, our investments, we protect our customers, we protect ourselves from downtime, which causes more losses by ensuring that we do procure uh, quality transformers, but transformers which are backed by warranty, uh, which is, like I said, a statement of quality. Uh, and that is to basically say, in the event that we lose a transformer before the warranty period lapses, we are able to get replacement at no additional cost. So, Chair, we are on top of that and uh, working together with my team, we will want to assure Kenyans uh, through this house that we will procure quality transformers and pitch for that warranty to confirm our quality and the failures that we've seen in the past. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you uh, very much, Honorable Sears. Uh, from my dashboard, Honorable Members, I have got a list of uh, eight members who I believe would want to ask supplementary questions to the CS. But when you look at the number of questions, the second question, question number 20, that is by Senator Tute, it is more or less related but nationwide covering. I therefore would direct that we allow the Honorable Senator Tute to ask that question thereupon all supplementary questions by members can be asked for the CES to respond to all of them. Yeah. Honorable Senator Chute, proceed to ask question number 20. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, question number 020. Question number one. Which entities were responsible for the disruptions of power supply in most parts of the country on Saturday, 11th November 2023, and the nationwide power blackout that occurred on Friday, 25th August 2023? And could the Cabinet Secretary state any actions taken against those entities? Question number two. Would the Cabinet Secretary provide a comprehensive report on the losses incurred by businesses because of the power disruptions, while clarifying whether the affected businesses will be compensated? Question number three. What measures has the government put in place to ensure the stability of the national electricity grid to prevent the recurrence of such power disruption. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Senator Chuta. Honorable Sears, you may proceed to respond to the questions by Senator Chuta. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Chuta, for that question. That uh, uh, touches on the outage that was experienced and the disruption of power supply in most part of the country on that Saturday, 11th November 2023, and the nationwide blackout that occurred on August, Friday, 2023, and the actions we've taken against uh, the agencies. The status of investigation into the nationwide power outage on those two dates, uh, honorable members, um, let me respond that at the time when we experienced that national outage, the system demand at the time of that occurrence was way below the peak demand. There was enough power on the grid uh, as we were only taking in 1,855 megawatts uh, within the generation mix of hydro, which at that time was delivering 355 megawatts. Geothermal at that time was delivering 817 megawatts. Uh, thermal uh, the, was delivering 244 megawatts, wind was at 356 megawatts, and the import from, uh, we didn't have any imports from Uganda, or we were feeding them some two megawatts, because we do a power exchange 
uh, with Uganda. And at this particular time, uh, we were pushing some two megawatts to Uganda. We were getting uh, 100 megawatts from Ethiopia uh, through the, uh, we call it EEP. The first event that related to the outage was recorded by our system at the National Control Center in Dandora, uh, the SCADA system, at 21 hours, 45 minutes, 0, 09 seconds, 187 milliseconds. I, I stress that, Chair, because we record events to the milliseconds or any occurrence because sometimes we want to see the sequence of events, what happened before which event. And that uh, outage was associated with dynamic, what we call dynamic reactive power compensation system at Lake Turkana, uh, wind power in Loyangalani. Uh, and the analysis of the event, honorable members, uh, revealed that the compensation unit was responding to a dip the system seemed to have seen a dip of voltage. Though the dip occurred at almost the same time with a sub-transmission uh, line at Earth River, a 66 kV line at Earth River substation, uh, which was recorded at 21.4509.277. You will see that the dip, um, honorable members, occurred uh, about 100 milliseconds uh, later in our Earth River uh, substation. It is, however, unusual for such faults to affect the grid owing to the fact that the lines are the downstream, uh, the downstream uh, in terms of um, being the, la the last mile side of our consumption. And, and therefore, we do not expect uh, really uh, that unusual fault to affect the grid owing to the fact that the line are, like I said, at the downstream of the grid and the resultant impact on the transmission grid should be minimal. Examination of the wave, the wave, the waveforms and the events in the SCADA system shows that Electricana wind pro power, uh, project or power project uh, uh, power plant uh, tripped in 140 milliseconds when the voltage dip was slightly above 80% 80, 80 of the normal 220 uh, system uh, to hold for at least two seconds uh, for a fault through, uh, for a fault right through. The fault can really be allowed to go through if the system was to hold for two seconds. But uh, this reactive power reacted and in less than 187 milliseconds, 140 milliseconds, um, the system shut down. So that really caused a challenge uh, which uh, cascaded down and uh, ran us into that challenge and that problem. On the 11th of November 23, Kenya Transmission National Grid uh, has installed interconnect generation capacity of, uh, with an installed capacity generation of 2806 megawatts with your thermal at that time 852, hydros 810, uh, thermal 506, wind 426 megawatts, solar 212 megawatts. Uh, the national grid is interconnected with Uganda uh, through a 132 kV double circuit line between Lesos and Tororo substation and Ethiopia electric power through a 500 kV uh, high voltage uh, DC line uh, linked at Suswa, to linking Suswa. On that particular day, this is the second uh, uh, partial blackout on the 11th November 2023 at 19 hours 57 uh, minutes, the country experienced a partial uh, outage of the electric power system the system demand before the outage again was approximately 2,057 2, megawatts distributed as shown on the table on the statement which I've signed and uh, given to the house. Hydros 553, geothermal 800 megawatts, thermal 234, wind 334, imports 136, totaling 2057 megawatts. 
you will not again honorable members that that was way below the generation capacity of the country or the peak power that we have seen before so it was nothing to do with the shortage of, of uh, power generation the power supply disturbance was triggered by a trip on an 80 megavar uh, a 90 megavar transformers at Olkaria 2 and Olkaria 1 Alkaria 1 additional unit substations. Alkaria Naivasha 132 line, honorable members, also tripped at the same time. The cost was attributed to a failed champer cable at Alkaria 1, 132 uh, kilovolt substation. The substation was commissioned in 1992, and reconstruction work, in addition to upgrading of the generator, uh, is due to commence uh, this year. The loss of the 170 megawatts. And Naivasha 132 kilovolts line resulted in increased power flow from Olkaria uh, to Kibos 220 kV line and Suswa, Nairobi North 220 kV line. The shift in the power flows due to that caused an overload in one of the very weak links we have in the west of Kenya, Kisumu Moroni, which is the very reason why we are accelerating the construction of Narok Momet. So Kisumu Moroni 132 KV line and the two 200 megawatt transformers and the Dandora 220 substation, Kisumu Moroni 132 line then tripped on an overload further, overloading the transformers at Dandora, which tripped. With a trip of these critical lines and cascade trip of Chuja, Naivasha, Kibos, Kisumu uh, 132 to Moroni, the western part of the country was kind of isolated, it was islanded. And, uh, and, um, and uh, we then uh, saw that, that partial uh, challenge. Um, this led to several imbalances in the system. When this thing, the system tried to balance itself, and in a very short time, that imbalance uh, really, uh, in terms of the cascading of the uh, challenges, uh, caused that, that challenge of partial, partial outage. Uh, like I said, this led to several imbalances in the system, leading to cascade trip of generators in Olkaria, Nairobi, caused uh, loss of Ethiopia transmission and Uganda imports. And the loss of generation led to that partial collapse of the system. However, Mount Kenya grid system was, uh, I landed with generators at Kamburu, the, the cascade, uh, and Gitaru running and tied to the customers connected to this part of the, of the grid. You will note members that because it was a partial uh, outage, we were able to restore within three and a half hours. And so the restoration activities began at 2011 hours on the same day, and supply to the customers was finally restored uh, fully by 139 hours in the morning with sufficient generations av availed. Members, uh, honorable members, joint technical and operational teams in the energy sector have continuously reviewed such major disturbances with resultant improvement recommendations, some of which have been implemented. These endeavors and efforts have continued to reduce the frequency and severity of system disturbance, especially those that would cascade and lead to nationwide grid collapse despite its vulnerability. System defense mechanisms such as effective under frequency load shedding uh, are some of the uh, strategies we have employed today and provision of emergency overload capacity for critical transmission lines have been employed and are working well and what you will possibly notice for a while we have not seen uh, some of these uh, systems. What I'm basically saying here, when there is an overload we'd rather pull down some of the feeders or deload a network and not push power and overload the system. Uh, that would cascade and cause a nationwide, nationwide or the kind of partial uh, blackout that we talked about. So what we do, honorable uh, speaker, and you'll possibly notice this more in the area of Bomet because of uh, Moroni Chemosit, when there is an overload in that line, because um, the li that line is built on a capacity of about 80 megawatts, 89 megawatts, and many times it would be carrying up to 120, 130 megawatts, Moroni Chemosit, down to Sotik Gigathi, all the way to Awendo. Sometimes we have to deload the line by pulling some of the customers down 
uh, so that we don't overload the country. And so some of the uh, blackouts that you see sometimes is what we are calling here effective under frequency load shedding to manage uh, the capacity of the system so that in a way we are islanding, we are isolating the problem to that small area by bringing it down and therefore sustaining the rest of the country. However, the proposed key projects are uh, especially alternative transmission lines for evacuating power from key generation points which are bending poses major challenge in operating the network optimally. Uh, comprehensive, we have attached a comprehensive list of our recommended critical creed enhancement project, which are in various stages of implementation in the annex. Allow me, honorable members, at this point to point to the fact that whereas the energy sector in Kenya is almost fully unbundled to the extent that the generation, the transmission, and the off-taker operate independently uh, with their own balance sheet, with their own systems. Uh, Ketraco today is still supported on government balance sheet. And therefore, until, and we are working very quickly to employing the PPP framework to see how Ketraco, with the limited government resources, could be able to work through the PPP framework, attract private investors to build transmission system, remove the constraints on the overloaded um, uh, circuits, and be able to forestall this challenge. So a number of circuits today are undergoing evaluation through the PPP framework, and so that uh, Ketraco can, be, can leverage on private investment and be able to uh, forestall some of these challenges. Some of the action the ministry is addressing the root cause of grid instability is formulating lasting solution in order to comprehensively address the weaknesses. One of them is what I just mentioned uh, through the PPP framework. Further, the government together with our development partners are working on grid reinforcement plan to ensure the frequent blackouts experienced lately do not become a persistent matter. Government is committed, honorable members, a speaker, uh, in having a reliable, sustainable, and resilient national grid uh, system. And to an extent where, like I said, generation seems to be doing well, uh, the off-taking through KPLC and what we are doing to strengthen their balance sheet, you've lately realized that we have allowed KPLC uh, minority shareholders to participate in the structure of governance, corporate governance, by bringing in four independent directors uh, to represent the interest of the 49.9% shares which are uh, out through the Nairobi Stock Exchange. And the government side today is represented by five members. Th those are some of the reforms which we are working through in Kenya Power to address governance issues, address the power losses from the current 22%, and we've given ourselves 16% in the next three years, address the issue of the balance sheet so that Kenya Power balance sheet can be strong enough to be able to go out there and do what they need to do for the country in assuring us of reliable, sustainable, resilient, uh, and the national uh, grid with respect to what I've said uh, in the PPP framework uh, so that we do not have to only come to the House or to Parliament to look for resources to build the infrastructure nationally. It can be built by the private sector and leverage on the electrons that flow on that network the way we toll our road highways. We should be able to toll the lines and be able to uh, get return on investment uh, on the PPP framework. Speaker, Honourable Members, uh, thank you. Thank you, Honourable Sears, for your very elaborate uh, response to the question by Senator Chute. Now, Honourable Members, I have got 11 requests on my dashboard. I believe these requests are with regard to supplementary questions. As I allow you, I would like to direct that we will limit uh, to uh, now they are becoming tough. We will limit the amount of time each member will take to ask the question. And I would like to direct you to be guided by standing order 51C7 on supplementary questions. I will not hesitate to rule you out of order in the event of non-compliance with that uh, particular standing order. And for purposes of order, I will uh, limit each member to
to one question uh, within two minutes. Start with the majority leader, Senator Aaron. Thank you, uh, Ms. Senator Chute, what's your point of order? I have a, Honorable Speaker, I have two supplementary questions. Very well. Yes. I'll allow you to go first because you asked the question. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to first of all thank the CS and the PS on behalf of the people of Marsabet. Honorable Speaker, uh, we visited uh, the CS's office some time back because of the problems we had of electricity in Marsabet. That problem has been solved through his efforts and the PS. I want to say thank you very much on behalf of our people. Honorable Speaker, uh, the question that I've asked is who foots the bill? Who is going to pay the cost the business people incurred and the damages? That is my uh, question. And also, uh, the other question, Honorable Speaker, is Kenjin is going to come to Marsbit very soon. And they have already started the public participation process. And uh, the CS is aware that we had an issue with electrical wind power. And the issue is still before the court. Can the, P can the CS tell us what, what are we going to do? What is he going to do in regards to Kenjin going to Loyangalani for a supply of electricity? And finally, I want to ask the CS to tell us how far has he gone on the issue of uh, the line from Electrocano wind power going into Marsabit and Isiolo. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable CS, proceed to respond to that. Honorable CS, we are waiting on you to check uh, the microphone. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Speaker and Honorable. The supplementary question from Honorable Chute, and thank you for the compliments. We are at your service, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, if there are issues that we can deal on one by one, we'll be happy to do so, um, because we have one goal, to build this country together. Um, Marsa, but let me, let me answer the second question uh, on what we are doing uh, or what Kenyan is doing to better service the Loyangalani. distribution of power, we recognize that we need to service these residents of this area. And there is a project which uh, Honorable Chute may be aware about where we are connecting Loyongalani. We are building a high voltage line from Loyongalani to Marsabet and from Marsabet down to Siolo. Uh, when we came into office, uh, that project had been uh, processed uh, together with Kilgil, Mala, uh, Tika Mala, and a payment made uh, for the counterpart funding to support the, 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 foreign, the, foreign, the foreign side which was coming out of uh, China Exim. So a payment has been made. What we did immediately, because that payment was not enough, was to discope the two projects, the Loengalani, Marsabet, Isiolo, we discovered it from Gilgil, uh, Thika, Mala. Uh, 
and, and what that meant is we were able to then take Gilgil, Thikamala onto a PPP framework, the PPP I talked about, and it's advancing well. The Loingalani Marsabet Isiolo then remained with the payment which represents 15% of the payment which is required as a counterpart funding so that we can draw the XM funds to be able to build that line. We are further discoping that project to ensure that as we build this line, we are able to step down from 400 to 132 and 66 and be able to service that community. And as we go to Siolo, we should be able also to step down from the 400 KV uh, through that discoping and ensuring that uh, we service the people of Isiolo, uh, Marsabit, as the line comes down. That is an, an advanced stage. The discoping work is going on through uh, China Exim. We, in principle, we are done on the Kenya part, and the payment has been made. So we should be seeing, as soon as we are done with our partners, uh, China Exim and the contractor, the line or the contractor going to site, because uh, payment has already been made uh, on the counterpart uh, Kenya, Kenya portion. And so as soon as we finish with China Exim, we should see not only the big lines being built, but the step down from those high voltages to the voltage that feeds the communities coming out. And together with Last Mile for the first time, we should see uh, Loengalani on grid. We should see Marsabet on grid coming down all the way to Isiola, where we already have one the two line. Communities uh, cobbling with the Last Mile programs uh, where you fund us as parliament. Uh, regarding the first question on compensation, uh, when we have a major uh, blackout which impacts on the whole country, uh, the point would be to establish the cause and be able to really apportion the blame. Why you had me reading up to the second, the millisecond, when the event occurred, is to find out whether did the in private investor power plant in Lecturkana go out first and cause the problem, or was the problem caused by the Juja 220, which came in 100 milliseconds later? So that work is going on, but again, honorable members, when we have a blackout, it is so significant in terms of losses for the country. And like I said, when we have a company like Kenya Power where we are trying to restructure its balance sheet to be able, you know Kenya Power pack stops all the IPPs in terms of uh, uh, the partial risk guarantees uh, that supports power generation for Kenya. And uh, unlike the banks, if one bank goes down, the other banks would be there. So we really need to take care of KPLC even as we go today to the, from one market, uh, one market uh, a player to an open market where we will be allowing generators to generate power and wheel it uh, to market or to load centers using uh, the wheeling uh, policy which is shortly being gazetted for purposes of allowing uh, multiple players in the industry. Because when I talked about a market which is unbundled, you should be able to generate your own power in a power plant and get the trucker to wheel that power to market for you and sell that power to industry, wherever you want to sell in the country. And, and that then removes the Kenya power being required to reticulate or transmit and reticulate. So the unbundling is a significant aspect of what we've done in supporting uh, opening up the market so that we then move from a one market buyer where Kenya Power buys all the energy and distributes to an open market where anybody can generate, use get trucker to wheel the power to market and sell that power to industry, whatever the industry is. Uh, a lot of work is still going on in this space of compensation and how much can we compensate when there is something like a national disaster or an, a major accident. Uh, but as regarding uh, challenges where uh, a cabling problem or a transformer caused a problem and Kenya power is culpable, then that doesn't present a problem in compensation and we do that from time to time. But when we have a national uh, challenge like when uh, the whole network goes out because of something that is almost close to a national disaster, it becomes a challenge to say who should compensate because we would certainly be closing down a company that 
uh, we need to support the rest of the economy. Uh, we need to pay attention to that compensation space, but compensation do happen in, 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 in where the faults are very specific and pertaining to what could have been avoidable uh, to the extent that uh, Kenya Power would then be able to compensate the affected uh, families or the affected businesses uh, to that extent. Uh, so we need to look at how do we then compensate when it is a national challenge uh, which if costed even the entire company could basically go under and, and therefore cause a problem for the entire country. Thank you members. Thank you, Honorable Sias. Uh, I will now allow members to ask the supplementary questions, and I'll start with uh, Senator Mohamed Fakir. Asante, uh, Mr. Speaker. Swali langu ni kuhusiana na kupotea kwa umeme katika county ya Mombasa, ususan wakati wa mwezi mtukufu wa Ramadhani. Mr. Speaker, imekuwa sasa ni jambo la kawaida umeme kupotea mara kwa mara katika kaunti ya Mombasa na maeneo ya karibu hususa na wakati huo ambao tunafanya tunafanya ibada za usiku wakati wa mwezi mtukufu Ramadhani. Wengi wanashindwa kuhudhuria ibada hizo kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa umeme na vile vile pia ni kiusalama si rahisi mtu kutoka nyumbani ikiwa hakuna mataya barabarani ambayo yamezimika kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa umeme. Ye waziri ana mipango gani ya kuhakikisha kwamba kwa hizi siku 14 zilizobaki za mwezi mtukufu Ramadhani tutakuwa na umeme sio Mombasa peke yake Kenya nzima ili waislamu waweze kumuomba Mungu wao bila ya matatizo yote. Asante mheshimiwa speaker. Uh, Honorable Sias. Asante Senator Faki. Uh, Mombasa uh, county ni county moja ambayo umeme inayotumika hapo uh, utokana sana na generation wa uh, thermal that is where we have most of the thermal power plants the other generation ile tunaitumia sana Mombasa ni ile inatoka hapo Malindi uh, weru weru hapo nyuma kidogo we've got a, 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 a solar solar power plant uh, inamilikiwa na company moja inaitwa Cloblek uh, as an IPP and feeds 50 megawatts to the grid uh, pia Mombasa uh, ile moto mingi inapatikana Mombasa ni inatoka Olkaria pengine uh, the cascade ile line ya zamani ya Kamburu inayoenda Mombasa but majorly um, geothermal kutoka uh, Olkaria tushajenga hiyo line 400 kV lakini currently we are operating at 220 kV na hapo Mariakani kuna station kubwa tutafungua hivi karibu pengine wiki ama mwezi mmoja mbili hivi uh, one month uh, see you uh, july tutafungua hiyo station ya mariakani uh, the challenge in mombasa uh, honorable members is the fact that most generation is happening out of mombasa and we are transporting power to mombasa and the only heavy generation particularly coming out of malindi ni ile ya jua na unajua jua ikipotea kidogo uh, inaanguka Iki, ikirudi inaamuka but what we are doing to the challenges ya uh, challenges of uh, intermittents we are trying to stabilize that power ili kwamba uh, tuhakikishe kwamba Mombasa is well served Mombasa is well served Senator uh, Abdul Haji what's your point of order Thank you Thank you bwana Asante sana bwana speaker. Waziri kidogo ananichanganya. Anaongea Kiswahili mara anabadilisha wa kizungu. So inakuwa ngumu kufuata maneno yake siachague moja akae kwa lugha moja kwa line moja tafadhali. Asante speaker. Hundred uh, years. Uh Senator Haji is concerned and I believe nitachagua Kiswahili lakini wacha niseme kwanza kwa Kiingereza. <laughs> So, uh, honorable members, like I said, the challenge in Mombasa is the fact that most of the generation up happens out of the region. We transport the power to Mombasa. What happens in Malindi or the generation out of Weru in Malindi, the solar power plant, 
you know most of the renewable plants like